How's it going everyone? Foxy here again with the second edition of Foxy's Flea Market Pickups. And today I have quite some interesting stuff. And um, let's just get right on to it. I got my Kindle here like last time to help me with notes and other things I want to talk about. And like I said on the last episode, or the first episode rather, um, that it's mostly going to be video game related stuff and some wacky things here and there that caught my eye. Alright, so like I said, let's get started. And the first thing I picked up was a table from a restaurant that closed down. Something Wings and just some... I honestly can't remember the name of the restaurant, but it's on the table. Uh, it was... He was asking 55 We dropped it down to 50 bucks, And it's a real nice just square table. And I don't, I don't have it right here, obviously, but I will take a picture... And show you at the end of the video what it looks like. And honestly, it's a really nice table. And um, so yeah, that's that's that. Next thing I have here is a Legend of Zelda DVD. I guess it's a volume. Um, I don't know, just an animated series of Legend of Zelda. It's called Havoc and Hyrule. It has four episodes on the back. I picked it up for a dollar. I thought it was funny and whatever, just went with it. So that's that. Next up is a Forces of Valor diecast model air, not a model, diecast airplane. Um, I had a bitch getting this out of the packaging because I didn't realize that it was screwed to the base. And, uh,. Well, I really honestly couldn't even see because the screws were black and I was doing it at nighttime with barely any light. So yeah, that, that kind of pissed me off. But it, it's a really nice model plane. Let me show it better for you. Really like it. I spent $4 on it. I'm a big fan of World War II model airplanes and just World War II airplanes in general. And that caught my eye and I had to get it. And same with this. It's by the same seller. He was selling a... I don't remember the brand, but I'll make sure to let you know at the end of the video. And I think this is a Spitfire. Correct me if I'm wrong. Or I'll correct myself if I need to. Uh, yeah, it's not as good quality as the Forces of Valor. But, you know, it's World War II airplane stuff. And it's die cast at the same scale as 148. So... And I bought this one for four bucks as well. And I, I just like the stuff like that. I don't know why. It's just something I really, really enjoy. Okay, so let's get started with the video game stuff. And first, I picked up a memory card for the original Xbox uh, for, I think, either a dollar or two. And it was sealed, brand new sealed. And what's funny about it is I actually thought it was like a bootleg thing, just ghetto, because... It says made in Malaysia. I didn't think that Microsoft's accessories or whatever were ever made in Malaysia. That's the only reason why I thought it was fake. But no, actually it isn't. It's a real legit official Xbox memory card. And I don't necessarily need one, but I kind of just wanted one to have it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, next, I picked up a Game Boy Color case. Now, I actually thought, when, when I went up to the lady and, and looked at this, I only thought it was the case, but when I opened it, it had the, uh, the Game Boy Color in there as well, and it's a, I think it's dandelion yellow, or whatever they call it, just a Game Boy Color, and it even came with a game that I don't care about, <laughs> Babe and Friends. It's something, I'll tell you that, I'm not really sure what to make of it, but it's a game, I guess. Um, and she was asking $5 for the whole set. And I jumped right on. I said, all right, I'll, I forked over the $5 quicker than anything. So, yeah, the only problem that the, the Game Boy Color has is there's this little tiny noticeable nick right here on the screen. But other than that, it works flawlessly. And for 5 bucks, you know, shit. You can't really go wrong with that. And and honestly, I would have only spent $5 on the case alone, but she was selling it as the whole set, so... Yeah, I had to pick that up. Okay, so next is the games. Well, let's start with this. Let's start with... 
Xbox games first. I got Enclave. Picked it up for a dollar. I really don't know anything about it uh, other than what it shows on the back. And from what it looks like, some sort of dungeon crawler type hack and slash maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but that's just what it looks like. Next up, Men of Valor. It is a Vietnam shooter, I think. Yeah, Vietnam era shooter including James Brown, the Mamas and the Papas and more. Oh, soundtrack. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't sure what they meant by that. But picked this up for 2 bucks. I love shooters. I'm a sucker for shooter games, especially shitty ones. I'm not sure if that's a bad one or not, but we will find out sooner or later. Okay, so next up GameCube games. I picked up another copy of Harvest Moon: A Wonderful Life uh for 3 bucks. The only reason why I picked it up again is because the disc is much nicer. And I picked up... Uh... No, never mind. The disc was much nicer, so I picked that up for 3 bucks. I was thinking about picking up a couple more games from the same seller, but I decided against it. Uh, and I also picked up Star Wars Rogue Squadron for 2 bucks. Came Comes with the manual and everything. Disc is in great condition. Just 2 bucks, Yeah. Uh, Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3. This the uh, trilogy, I guess. I don't have the original for the Nintendo 64, but I will pick that up one day. So yeah, both of these were two bucks. Thought it was a pretty good deal. Next up, Xbox games. Xbox 360, rather. Ace Combat 6... Fires of Liberty. I have not... I don't think I've played this one. I've played quite a bit of Ace Combat games in my day. I've played, I think, four, five... Um, I think there was one called Zero. And I've played... Whatever the newest one was. I can't even think of the name of it. But this one I don't think I've played at all. I picked that up for five bucks... Um, and then the last one we have here is Bass Pro Shops The Hunt. I, okay, the only reason why I picked this up is because I'm a decent fan of the Cabela's Big Game Hunters, uh, not the newer ones because they're more or less Cabela's animal slaughtering, just going around. Well, okay, let me say this. <clears throat> the recent Cabela games are fucking outrageous because you go around and it's almost like you can compare it to like just just a typical first person shooter game where there's just an obnoxious amount of just things coming after you for no apparent reason there'll be like there's one level I remember in one of the the I think it was Cabela's Big Game Hunter 2013 where there's like a shit ton of like cheetahs in these in these trees just attacking you all at once and it's just like where are they coming from and why am i why am i chasing after these guys it's just it's so badly good but i picked this up sheer because just i like the older cabela's big game hunter games and i want to give it a shot whether it's good or not i don't know and i also picked that up for 5 bucks as well okay so moving on we have, well, notes on my Kindle, the advice. Always check the discs and whatever's in the case of, like, a you know, like a, uh, if you have a boxed DS game that you're looking at, just always check what's inside of it because I had two instances where I almost bought something or I did buy something and it was not the game that was inside. Uh, most notably was... I picked up Animal Crossing for the DS, the case of it, and I paid him two bucks for it because that's how much he was asking. And then as soon as I gave him the money, I opened the case, and inside was definitely not Animal Crossing. It was like either Hannah Montana and Uno, I think, was inside of it. It was just like, okay, <laughs> can I have my money back? And he goes, yeah, I didn't know that was the game inside. It was just like... That pissed me off, but, you know, it was my fault. So just always make sure you check what's inside and always make sure the discs that 
you're buying the games from. If you're looking at a game that is scratched as fuck, just put it down. Don't buy it because I I always have a thing. If the game is slightly scratched, has a little bit of fingerprints, whatever, I'll think about it. But if it has like just cat claws all over the fucking thing and it's just it looks like it's been in a gutter for the last 40, 45 years, I will never even look at it. I'll put it down right away. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Don't listen to any of the sellers you buy shit from. If they say things like, um, you can't find this anywhere, or it's rare, or whatever, I guarantee you it's not. Because if you go on eBay, and, and I've actually done this, it's just like, there was a guy selling a copy of, it was like, Tato Legends for the PS2. It's like an arcade, a bunch of Tato games on the disc, or whatever, from like the 80s and the 90s and he was asking 25 bucks for it and he was like oh you can't get this anywhere it's a super rare game or whatever so I was like okay whatever so I go home and I check on eBay and it's just like there was 30 search results and I even checked on GameStop and some other sites and stuff and it's just like they all had it but they were charging like not even a fraction of what this guy was so it's like you're just so full of shit and, and just don't, just honestly, don't trust majority of what they're telling you if they're saying it's rare or whatever. It's most likely they're just trying to sell it. So just ignore 90% of what they say. And the last and final thing I have to say here is it's always a good idea to bring a backpack or something to carry the things that you're buying because you don't want to sit there. And if you're buying something like, okay, oh, I dropped something. Oh, well. If you're buying, like, this Game Boy Color and a couple of these planes which are in their boxes, you're not going to want to sit there and carry them around in your hands or even in, like, a plastic bag. So what I'll do is I'll bring a backpack and then just stuff the shit in there um, just so that I don't have to keep making the trick, but trip back and forth to my car to unload the stuff that I bought. So... That's a good idea if you're really going to a uh, flea market where there's like a lot of sellers and you know you're going to spend a lot of time there. Or even if you're planning on buying a lot of stuff, just bring a backpack. Even put a couple waters in there if it's hot outside. It's just a good idea. So yeah, that's the end of this edition of Foxy's Flea Market Pickups and I thank you very much for watching.